Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you're looking at this uh, video. Because we're in distance education and not in a class, so who knows when you're uh, doing your work. Well, my name is Professor Steve Alpern, and I'm going to be your instructor for this CIT uh, 217 Security Plus course that you're doing in distance education. Wow. And uh, glad to have you. So, why a video? Why am I making this video? Well, you know what? I have two reasons and two really important points of making this video. Number one is I want to give you a chance to uh, see who the person is on the other side of the course that you're taking. That's me. Uh, just unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a chance to know you. Of course, I know that some of you have been in my course before, and therefore I do know you. And some of you may have taken, let's say, Network Plus. So you've seen me before in a, a video as well. Okay? Well, what about the second point? Well, the second point for this video is really important because it's the only way and the best way that I can explain to you what this course is about, uh, what you need to get an A, what you should be doing, how you should approach it. Sure, it's in the syllabus, but how many of you read through that entire syllabus? So I really want you to read the syllabus, but I want to kind of summarize things uh, about this course, okay? And that's the purpose of the video. All right, so how do we get started in this course? Well, let me talk a, a second about, you know, Security Plus. This is the Security Plus SY0501. This is the new one. I took this exam, the certification. Is it easy? No, this one's not that easy. You've got to be really broad. You've got to be able to read questions and analyze pretty good. But it's passable, okay? So it's not an easy certification. Now, some of you, depending if you're in the course for certification or not, some of you may be taking this course because it's a requirement. Some of you may be taking this course because you're in uh, forensics or you're in cybersecurity, and you, you know, this is a this is a course up that trail. All right. So with that said, this is a very very broad course. They've changed this course around a lot, and it's very broad in scope. It wants you to know a lot of material. Okay. And in fact, the certification, if I could recall it, right, was about. 85 or 90 questions in maybe 100 minutes or something. So you have to have a, a broad knowledge of the security concepts in order to uh, pass this uh, pass the certification. Passing this course? No, no. I'm going to get you by and tell you how to do that. All right. So what do you need to get started? What book are we going to use? Nope. No book. <laughs> uh, we're going to be using Test Out. Now, sure, there are some books out there, but Test Out in distance education is going to give you basically all you're going to need and then some. That's the problem. And then some. So what I think you need to do is get a copy of Test Out. It's a, a web-based uh, utility. You may have used it before in maybe uh, A plus or uh, maybe N plus. Uh, you can get it from the school uh, bookstore or you can go directly to the manufacturer, LabSim, and buy it from them. And all the information on how to do that will be in an email to you. So up to you uh, how to do that. Now, I would recommend you get it at, as soon as possible. Now, if you've not used it before, what is it? It's a web-based utility. You sign in. You'll have your login. And once you get into it, you'll have videos, good explanations. You will have... Uh, uh, a database of questions that you really have to do. You will have some simulations which maybe some you do, maybe some you don't. You have some demonstrations. Uh, I like those. Those are really good. And you will have fact sheets. So after every chapter or section within the chapter, they'll have fact sheets. What I would do is recommend that you download the fact sheets that becomes your book. That's your study document. And you'll make a loose leaf book, you know, about that thick of all the fact sheets that you got. And you can restudy back into those fact sheets. So, the first thing to do is get yourself uh, your lab sim. Make sure you get it. Get into it and the instructions and everything, how to get it and how to sign in and what to do. Those are all in videos that I have uh, put up there. Uh, uh, not videos, but uh, emails that I've told you just exactly uh, what to do. Okay? So that's really important. Okay, the other thing before we start is that there are three documents that you need to get 
initially to start the course. One, you got to get the syllabus. Secondly, you got to get a summary of the assignments. And finally, you got to get your, your study schedule itself. Now, all of those documents are linked as downloaded documents sitting up in Canvas. So you hit Canvas, you'll see them up on the top. Click it, download it, get them. They're long, but get them. They're really important to you, okay? All right, so where do we go from here? Well, to begin with, once you have lab sim and you have your schedule of assignments, that will tell you what to do every week. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, whatever it is. Now, you don't have to follow that. What you do have to worry about is the exams that you have because there are cutoff dates on there in the exams. And since I'm talking about exams, let me talk about how you get an A in the course of what those exams are about, okay? All right. To begin with, this course is based on nine chapters. That's nine chapters that are part of uh, LabSIM. Each chapter has various sections. Maybe chapter one has four or five sections. Maybe another chapter has, wow, maybe it has eight or nine or ten sections or twelve sections. So sometimes you do a chapter in one week, sometimes it'll take you two weeks to do a chapter, depending on, you know, what's in that particular chapter, okay? And the way I've done it is that I've broken the course down in two sections. The first section will be chapters one through five, and the second section will be chapters six through nine. So you've got sort of two halves of the course, and I'll explain to you uh, why that's really important when I get to the points now. Okay, so the course itself is based on 500 points. That's it. What do you need to get an A? 450 points. What do you need to get a B? 400 points. What do you need to get a C? 350 points. Pretty easy. Based on 90%, 80%, 70% of the total 500 points. Okay? So, where do the points come from? Simple. You will have eight knowledgeability exams for a total of 120 points. You will have one midterm, 180 points, and one final, 200 points for your 500 points. Okay? Now, let's say you run the course, you finish it up, and you have 440 points. That's a B. Oh no, I got 449 points. That's still a B. You need 450. Well, how do we get 450? I've added in two uh, bonus exams, a midterm bonus and a final bonus, which will give you points over and above the normal 500 points. So let's say, for example, you end up with 440 points. You only need 10 more points to make the 450 for the A. And your bonus gives you, let's say, 18 points that you earned. Then you'd add the 18 to the 440, and you'd have 458. Bam, you're at an A. So the bonus exams also are pretty important. Now, every exam has a cutoff date. You have to hit the cutoff dates. If you miss the cutoff date, you will get a zero for that exam. They're all listed in the summary sheet that I told you to bring down. They're all listed in your assignments. They're all listed in Canvas. And I normally send you emails saying, don't forget, Sunday night is the final cutoff date for knowledge exam number one, knowledge exam number two, etc. Now, so you have to do that. So that's your only requirement, quite frankly, because if you say, let's say the first two weeks you had to read you know, whatever it may be, I don't, I'm not have a copy of the syllabus here, uh, you want to read that in the, in the last, uh, in the second part of the second week, and that's okay. It's a lot of material, but that's okay. But what you do have to do is meet the exam date. So what I'm saying to you in summary is that you can run the schedule the way it fits you. I've given you a suggested way to do it. What I would do is do it, you know, in piecemeal. But you're busy, you're traveling, you got some business, you can't do it, you got to that's up to you. Again, it's up to you, but you've got to meet the cutoff dates in each of the exams. You cannot come back to me with an email, Steve, I didn't realize there was an exam on the 18th, and I'm going to come back to you. I said, you should have realized that. You got a zero. So I'm not nice about that portion. Now, Sure, there are some extenuating circumstances. I'll have to listen to those. Sometimes I'll say, well, maybe. Depends. But I'm not very open to you missing exams because I've given you so much flexibility. Now, the knowledgeability exams, you had eight of them to take with cutoff dates. And they're not that hard, at least in the beginning. Okay, why am I saying that? Because in the beginning, you know, 
I want you to get used to all of the security material that you've got to cover. So not too bad. But as we get further down, they become a little bit harder. But again, those exams are very focused on a particular aspect of one chapter. You don't have to worry about covering five chapters, which let's say a midterm or a final. So it should be pretty easy. Okay. Is it open book? How do I do that? Do I have to come in the club? Up to you. You could do it in your house, you could do it in a college, you could do whatever you want. Okay? And it is open book. I have no, nothing stopping you there. But, okay, there is a time requirement. So maybe it says 25 questions, 20 minutes. Wow! That seems to be, uh, you know, a short time. Well, wait a second. And when we do this certification, you almost got a minute of the question, and it's closed book. So if you've done your material, and you've done your, your work, rather, then, you know, some of them are pretty easy. What's the port number for 23? Uh, what's the port number for HTTP? Or those are, I mean, those only take six seconds. So you may spend 10 seconds on one question, so maybe another one you have to think a little bit about. But they're all multiple choice. They're pretty easy. Okay? So... I would expect that you would do uh, pretty good. Now, we talk about the midterm. Okay, so maybe the midterm is 80 questions, but it's only going to cover the first half of the course. So what does that mean? Well, once you finish it, put it aside, and then worry about the second half of the course. For your grade, that is. If you're going to certify, like some of you might be doing, then you're going to have to spend a special effort and a lot more time in you know putting it all together for your certification it's not well in my opinion it's not that hard in my opinion you have to have a broad knowledge and you have to practice on exams when i say practice i'm saying maybe you're practicing 200 questions a day maybe more for a couple weeks yes that's it that's what i say it's not that easy now where do you get the questions to practice on look LabSim will give you a ton of questions. Practice all those. In addition to that, I have listed up in Canvas, and I'm going to have a video, by the way, on, uh, on Canvas, which I need you to look at. It'll be linked up there. And we're going to have another video on, uh, on LabSim, which I want you to look at, where I'm going to explain a lot more about that. But when you go on Canvas, you're going to see an area called Certification Exams, N10, 004, well that's the old exam, and N10005, oh, not N10, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of networking, SY005, that's the one you want to be on, that's the latest one, and there'll be a bunch of exams, you got to do all those exams, and do them a couple times, you've got to be running about 85, 87, and 90 percent on those exams, you can take all the practice exams I posted up on, on, uh, on Canvas, uh, they're unlimited, uh, and uh, as many times as you want to do it, they're ungraded, oh, as far as that's concerned, are there any graded exams? The only graded exams we're going to have in this course is going to be the exams that you take that I mentioned before in Canvas, which are going to be your knowledgeability exams, your midterm, and your final. Those are required. What about the bonus exams? You know what? They're not required. But <laughs> my suggestion, take them, because I saw the way the grades have run in the course before, and those will help you get over that one link to get that extra grade because to get you know over four, well some students do pretty well they get you know without even taking it they get 465 points out of 500 wow that's pretty good but again you have open book you can refer to your notes you don't have to memorize all the ports you don't have to memorize uh, a whole bunch of things that you thought that you would have to memorize uh, so in that case it's uh, not so bad okay all right I think that kind of explains, uh, you know, how all that works. There, there is no homework, so don't come back to me and say, do I have to do homework? Now, it just came to my mind. One more thing to mention to you, why it's really important. Initially, I said to you that uh, LabSim has uh, 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 Security Plus and then some. It goes way beyond what you need. So when you look at the um, assignment, and study schedule, I put down certain things that not required. Not required. Not required. For example, they may go deeply into some Cisco con con uh, um, configurations on, let's say, a switch. 
Well, if you haven't done Cisco, this could be pretty hard. So I did, don't worry about that. It's not required. Okay? You could look at some of the demonstrations because then you just look into the video. That's fine. But you don't have to do that. Quite frankly, they're not going to ask you to do a lot, of, a lot of that kind of thing. Now, when we get to some tools like some penetration tools or maybe some port scanners, uh, they'll give you a, a simulator to try it. Okay, if you can do it, that's fine. If you can't do it, that's going to be fine too. So sometimes I'm going to say it's optional. That means up to you. Not required. Don't worry about it. They're not going to, it's, it's beyond what you really need in the requirements for the uh, Security Plus exam. Again, I took that Security Plus exam and they're, you know, they didn't ask you a lot of that kind of material. You know, a lot of the, the kind of um, uh, the kind of lab that you were trying to do. Again, in, in lab sim, they give you simulated labs. Those are really hard. If you could set up your own little lab with uh, some virtual, then it would be probably uh, a little bit easier for you to do in your home lab. You could try some of your home labs. And let me tell you at this point, do not uh, forget about YouTube. Um, if you want to do, uh, maybe you're looking at penetration, or you're looking at port scanners, and you're not sure how they work, go up there and look at that. They'll give you some really good demonstrations. For the certification, you just got to really just know, have the feel of, you know, uh, wh which tool would I use under what condition? Okay, you'll see those kind of questions come up, and those are what you should be uh, looking at. Some area that was I, I thought I was surprised about was they gave you a lot of uh, sometimes reading a log file and say what was the problem in the log file. Now I put up some questions about that. I'm not sure of the answers that I've got the right answers, but if you look at the certifications, you'll see similar questions to that kind of a thing that I put up. You may want to look at that. Whenever you see a log file or a firewall and and uh, lab sim is going to be talking about it. Pay attention to that because sometimes you get, you know, a question that'll a list. You, they'll show you the log file and say, "Well, what kind of what's the problem here?" And if you've never seen that before, it's pretty hard to interpret. Or they'll um, use a, a program which will catch some uh, some data and they'll say, "You know, you look at this data and say, what, what's the problem in the data? Is there what kind of attack is going on?" So whenever you see that kind of stuff, it's uh, pretty good uh, to look at. Okay. All right, so I think I covered enough about the exams. I think you should know what you have over here. Those are the requirements, and, you know, that's what you've got to do. All right, what else? Email. Okay, it's really important. The only way that we are going to be able to uh, communicate with each other is going to be through email, and the email that we're going to use is the email that's up here in Canvas. Sure, I tell you, you can use my CSN email if there's a problem. I know a couple of students have already written me on that. I don't like to answer that one. Now, if you can't get, if you can't correspond to me through uh, um, Canvas, you have a problem, then sure, use my CSN account. That's fine. I'll get with you on that. But email is really important. You should have some emails sitting up there for you now. And one of those emails is probably going to say, hey, by the way, tell me why are you taking this course? Who are you? And are you into the course? There's no way for me to know that you're in the course until you get back to me. And I have, really have a problem with this because Every semester, when I run this, some students, they just don't get back to me. And then all of a sudden, you know, six weeks later, a student comes back and says, Hey, by the way, um, when's the first exam? When's the first exam? That was uh, four weeks ago. So you got to kind of get back to me that I know you're in the course, okay? So respond to the emails. Check the emails at least once a week. And if you got any questions, get back to me in email. Read the syllabus. Read, uh, listen to this video again and get back to me in an email and tell me, what did you understand? Now, why I think that's important is that maybe it applies to everybody. I missed something, and then I can send an email out to everybody and you know tell them that kind of thing. One thing just came to my mind. You know, I'm doing this extemporaneously. I don't have any notes other than a couple of pieces here. What happens if you take an exam question and you got it's a problem and there's a problem? You gave the right answer and I gave you no credit. Get back to me. Look, I have. Oh, well over a thousand questions up there. Sure, I got some mistakes in the questions. Then get back to me and let me know the problem in the question and I'll go ahead and fix it. In fact, I'm always going to send you an email like that again to say, by the way, problems and questions, get back to me. Let me know where the problem is. I can correct it. You took an exam. You didn't get credit. I can correct it. I can help you, okay? So uh, don't, you know, don't get a heart attack because of that. 
that's just part of the course because of how much stuff is up there. So emails, really important. The practice exams, look, when you look, by the way, when you, you, you know, you have LabSim, but when you look at Canvas, you're also going to have uh, other videos which I provided previously. They're there for you. Look at them. You don't want to look at them? Don't look at them. Depends on where you, you know, where you are. Again, for me, when I look at a certain area and I need to get some help, I'll go up to YouTube and see if I can get some guy giving me a video. There's so much material up there, you just don't have time to look at it all, and it's all related to Security Plus, okay? There's a lot to it in Security Plus. So, you know, look at the videos that are available. They're the best things to help you. If you want some books, I'll recommend one or two books. If that's what you need, there's a lot of stuff that's out there in that as well, okay? Now, what happens if you're going through the course, you're not doing good because you've got no time, you're going to be away, and you've got to withdraw. I cannot take you out of the course. It's up to you. You have to withdraw based on, you know, the college's requirements on withdrawal. You have to make the withdrawal yourself, so you've got to do that yourself. So keep aware of that. And I'm not sure of the date. You'll have to look up there. You know, there's a final date that if you go beyond that date, no withdrawal. That means how, what happens? Well, when the course is over, I look at the total amount of points. You, you got less than 300. That's an F, and you get an F. You know, you got 400. It depends on the number of points you got because the course is based on the points. That's it, okay? So that's pretty important for you as well. Um, if for whatever reason you say, you know, hey, Steve, can we meet a while? Okay, I have some office hours over here, but the best way to do the meeting with me is I'm at camp. I'm at camp. I'm at uh, Charleston. I don't go up to Cheyenne as much anymore. My office where, where I'm doing this video, where you're seeing it, is in my office in Charleston. Uh, come here and, and meet with me. Send me an email, set up an appointment time, and we can meet. Best times, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I'm around, especially Wednesday, I have a Network Plus class, so I'm always around on Wednesday. Tuesday and Thursday, I'm in for some other classes, so I'm floating in and out. And, uh, you know, if you got to meet for another reason, give me a buzz or give me an email and let me know. Again, if you plan on certification, which I would suggest if I were taking this course, that's what I would do. Uh, then all the material you need to certify is up there, but you're going to have to put in a pretty big effort to do it. I can tell you how to do it. That's about it. But I can't, you know, I can bring it to the water, and I, but I can't make you drink it. You have to spend some time in it. You're not going to certify. If you, for example, you say, well, I just finished LabSim. Can I certify? I don't think so. I think you need to go beyond that, and you need to be pretty good at reading questions and being able to interpret those questions. That's the key. Having broad knowledge, that's going to help also. But the, if the more you practice, the better you're going to be in terms of uh, trying to uh, certify. Okay? All right. I think I've rattled on uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much <laughs> on this course. Um, just to review, I think Go ahead and make sure you get the syllabus, read it, get any questions, get back to me. Get the summary sheet. I got this summary sheet up here. It's really good because it tells you what you got to do each week. It gives you the cutoff dates of all the exams. You need that thing. And get the assignment schedule because in the assignment schedule that I have, and they're all linked up there, it'll say, hey, don't worry about this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. But make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Uh, you'll see all that when you go up in labs and okay? And get labs them as soon as you can because, believe it or not, your first exam is at the end of week three, which is due on 16th September. So you have between now, you know, between the school starts until 16th September for that first exam, and that's going to deal with basically uh, security basics, okay? That's the first knowledge of building. It's pretty easy. It's not hard. If you do all the labs them, you're fine, but if you don't have labs them, what are you basing it on? Okay, and just do the practice questions. You'll do good. I see the grades. They they normally come up pretty good. They as we get further on, and we I make the exams a little harder. Uh, I pull questions from a lot of different databases that I have that are up there. You have them, and I use those kind of questions, and I limit your time, which makes me which makes you having to know the material. You don't have time to Google it and look it up. Uh, you got to go through it. Uh, then it gets to be, you know, a little bit harder, okay? Okay, uh, that's about all I have for you 
in this particular video, I'll leave this up normally, you know, a week or two, because some students come in a little bit late, and then I'll link the video back up on Canvas somewhere so that if you wanted to re-look at it for whatever reason, it's there for you uh, to look at. So with that, uh, I hope you get back to me an email as soon as possible. Let me know you're in the course, you read it, you understand it, uh, and who you are, so I kind of get a feel like make a whole bunch of notes on that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll go through the course and see how it goes. Again, it's, uh, this is a foundational course. This is, really a, th this is really a great course because it's covering a lot of the network plus and then some that covers a broad area of security. It's the foundation to all the security courses. You need this course, if you, especially in cybersecurity, if you're going up in that area. Okay? Okay, with that, let's stop here. Uh, I want to wish you a good semester. I hope you get out of the course what you want, and uh, I hope it works for you, and I'll see you around campus. With that, we'll say goodbye. Signing off. We'll see you. Bye.